Good evening. I want to welcome everyone, especially the visitors we have. Hope you'll stick around a minute or two afterwards so we can visit with you if, if you haven't visited with, with our visitors yet and uh, uh, get acquainted with you. If you should need assistance, there'll be some ushers in the vestibule area that can assist you with uh, restrooms or nursery or whatever you may be in need of. I ask you now to join us in singing as Shed leads us. This song will have an opening prayer. <clears throat> Hear me when I call, O oh God, my righteousness, unto Thee I come in weakness and distress. Hold my trembling hand, lest helpless I should fall. Pray with me. Our God and our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy high and holy name. We're thankful, Father, for this opportunity we have to assemble together in like precious faith at the close of this day. We're thankful, Father, for everything that you do for us, all the spiritual blessings and temporal blessings you bless us with each and every day. Most of all, Father, we're thankful unto thee for the spiritual blessings we enjoy in Christ Jesus for thy written word and for the church that was established by him, and especially for your love and sending Christ to this earth to suffer and die on the cross that we might, he might be a propitiation for our sins. We pray, Father, that you forgive us of our sins and repent of them. We realize, Father, we're weak and often do those things contrary to your will, leave undone things we should do. We pray that we may always bring glory to your name. 
We pray, Father, for those that are sick and afflicted, especially for those of this number. There are many here that are shut in and, and going through surgeries and upcoming surgeries. We pray that you bless all the means being used that they might be restored back to their much wanted health. We pray for this country, Father, for the leaders here from the lowest level to the highest level. Pray that they may always lead in a way that we may have this freedom to worship you without fear from mankind. We pray, Father, for those that are lost and never name your name. Pray that something may be said even this evening that will prick their heart and that they may repent and turn to thee while there's still time this side of eternity. We ask, Father, to be the leaders of this congregation here at Mount Pleasant for the deacons and the elders. Pray that they may look to you for wisdom, that we always lead, that we may grow uh, numerically as well as spiritually. We pray, Father, for Brother Tom as he labors here and preaches and for PJ and their families. Pray that they may have a long life in your service. We ask you to be with Brother Tom this evening. He speak to us. He may speak to us of the oracles of God. And we may listen to those things in view of eternity. Go with us now through the further exercise of service on through the future scenes of life. And we ask for a home in heaven with thee when this life is over. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Once I stood in the night with my head bowed low in the darkness as black as could be, and my heart felt alone, and I cried, Oh Lord, don't
This cup passed from me. No, he was thinking. No, he was thinking. Grief, death would bring to his own. Deep was his sorrow. Deep was his sorrow. When he was praying alone. You can catch the sad tone of his voice as he said, Thy will, not my own, must be done. As a lamb to the slaughter, he soon must be led to die. As the crucified one, when he was praying, Jesus was praying. There in Gethsemane, said, Loving Father, said, Loving Father, if you will, let this cup pass from me. No, he was thinking, no, he was thinking, grief, death would bring to his own. Deep was his sorrow. As he prayed there alone in such deep agony, it was a most beautiful prayer, just to think his great heart was all broken for me, that he Thank you, Shed. Great job in leading us and singing. Thank you, Victor, for the prayer. Good evening to everybody. Hold them up. All right. Got your Bibles and uh, be turning in your Bibles to Luke 18. Luke chapter 18. Good to see you tonight. Always glad to have visitors with us, and we hope that our visitors feel extremely welcome. Uh, kind of have a saying around here uh, members expected, visitors always welcome. Amen. Let's bow together for our prayer. Heavenly Father, what a wonderful joy it is to be here tonight to sing these great hymns of encouragement and praise to your matchless name, to have the privilege to approach you through the avenue of prayer, to open up your word and study truths that are applicable to our lives as we see them through your holy word. And we pray your blessing tonight upon the message at this time, that it will lodge and rest in honest, open, and receptive hearts, and we can be better people as a result of what we see and hear tonight. We continue to pray for those with whom it is our duty and our privilege to pray for especially those uh, connected to our church family, that you would bless them with every blessing you know they stand in need of. Now bless this message and your humble servant and the proclamation of it. Whatever good is accomplished tonight, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory and the adoration as we pray in Christ's name. Amen. 
You know, one of the things that uh, we've noticed in our study of the life of Christ, the greatest story ever told, on an ongoing basis, is, is one thing. And that is how frequently the Holy Spirit, Luke, have given us the subject of prayer. I would not ordinarily this frequently talk about this one particular subject. But as you go back through and you just think about some of the lessons we've already looked at back in Luke 3, 21. If you look in your Bibles, it talks about Jesus and prayer. And this was when John, uh, the baptizer, was baptizing Jesus. And it simply says here, as Jesus was baptized, he prayed. You remember in Luke chapter 5 and verse 16, you'll recall here, it says that after the cleansing of a leper... It says that he often withdrew himself into the wilderness and he prayed. And I think you're seeing consistency when you see these verses. 616 in the book of Luke. We talked about this at length when Jesus was getting ready to choose those men who would revolutionize the world. It says that he continued all night in prayer to God. And you might remember 929 when we talked about this particular subject, 929, when Jesus was transfigured on the mount, it says, as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. And you might also remember just a few weeks ago in the model prayer, Luke chapter 11 and verse one, it says, it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. And so tonight we just trek over to Luke chapter 18. And Luke chapter 18, the first few verses talk about the parable of the persistent widow. And then Jesus talks about the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. And when he does, he talks in these two particular stories about how do I pray. So that's going to be the sum and substance of what we talk about tonight. How do I pray? So what I want to do is I want to read Luke chapter 18 verses 1 through 11 because the first word is going to begin with the letter P and that is going to be that we pray with persistence. We pray with persistence. Follow along with me in your Bibles. Then he spoke a parable to them, a parable to something that could happen or did happen. As you remember last week, Luke 16, 19 through 31, Jesus spoke a parable and uh, he said there was a certain man and he named the man. And so I'm pretty confident that that was a true story. Uh, and some of the parables are things that either could happen or did happen. So he spoke a parable to them that men ought always to pray and not lose heart. Saying there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God or regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. Watch for, and while he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual wearying or coming to me, she wearies me. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect to cry out day and night to them, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? So I want you to see in these eight verses, the, the P word, persistence. And, and, and the fact that Jesus says here that men ought always to pray. Make no mistake about it. The gospel of Luke is the gospel of prayer. We have seen it already several times and several different readings that we've had that Luke is emphasizing through the Holy Spirit the fact that we need to pray. We need to be involved in prayer and we need to continuously pray. Jesus spent all night in prayer to God. It's kind of interesting when you go to verse 2 that you have God and this judge who are diametrically opposed to one another. They are total opposites. The judge does not fear God, nor, nor does he regard man, as you see in verse 4. But God is just the opposite of that. God loves mankind. God loves to hear from his people in the avenue of prayer itself. 
And in this particular account, it seems like the widow in some judicial system that they had in place in this particular parable, this widow was not treated like she should have been. And there really is, if you stop and think about it, a, a special place in the heart of God for widows, widowers, and really orphans in the scripture. God says that those of us who have not been in that condition are to help those who are in that condition. And so here's a particular story or an account of a lady who is a widow who was treated unfairly and unjustly in the judicial system. And so what she does to this judge who doesn't want to give her the time of day, she begins to continuously put her request in front of him. And she does this so much that her persistence pays off. And the judge becomes weary with her requests. And just look at it again in verses 4 through 6 in your Bibles. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. So I think this shows us first and foremost how persistence certainly pays off when we talk to God. And how much more will a loving father hear our requests? Now we can go back in Luke and look at this in the Sermon on the Plain. But since we did that a few weeks ago, I want to take you back to Matthew chapter 7. And look at what Jesus said about persistent praying in the sermon on the mountain here in Matthew chapter seven. We're going to go ahead and read seven through 11 of Matthew chapter seven. So get your Bibles open there, your devices open there to Matthew seven, seven through 11. And what this is, is an acronym and an acrostic. When you see ask, seek and knock, A-S-K, it's an acrostic simply to say that we need to ask, but that's not, but just the third part of the equation. We need to seek that's the second part of the equation. But then we need to be persistent and continue knocking in our requests to God. Let's read it and notice it. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. What man is there among you if his son asks for bread? Would he give him a stone? What, what, what father does that? Or he says, if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? Watch 11. This is the key. If you then being evil in the flesh, like we are, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children as a parent or a father or a mother, watch this. How much more will your father who is in heaven Give good things to those who ask him. So you see here how much more will a loving father hear our request. And so the key is in verses 1 through 8, when you think about persistence, the key is to keep on keeping on. And this is the tone of Galatians 6 and verse 9. Where Galatians 6 and verse 9 simply says, do not be weary in doing good for we shall reap if we do not lose heart if we do not faint if we do not give up if we do not give out if we do not give in there is a sense in prayer in which we have to constantly be persistent and if it's in the confines of the will of God we have the confidence according to first John 5 and verse 14 that not only do he does he hear us but he will answer that request now it may not necessarily be the answer that you're looking for short term, but it will certainly be the answer that you're looking for long term. And so we have to keep that in mind in our prayer lives that we don't always get the answer that we think is best. We always get the answer that God knows is best. All right. So the first observation tonight is how do I pray? I pray with persistence. I pray continuing to ask, seek and knock. All right. Now, as we go to the second aspect, this is what you don't want to do. 
The first one is what you do want to do. The second one is what you don't want to do. And Jesus is going to talk about that in verses 9 through 13 of Luke chapter 18. So let's take our Bibles right back there to Luke chapter 18. And let's look at 9 through 14. 9 through 14. And he spoke this parable. Now he just spoke a parable, verses 1 through 8. And he spoke this parable to some who, now underline these three words in your Bible. Who trusted in themselves. That they were righteous and despised others. And he gives an example. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Now notice how the Pharisee stood. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Back to verse 9, trusted in himself. He prayed thus with himself, God, comma, I thank you that I'm not like other men. Extortioners, the unjust, adulterers. Now, now, now watch this. Or even as this tax collector. In verse 12, he shows his righteousness. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Now here's the example of the other guy. And the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself shall be exalted. You really have to hone in. On the example that Jesus gives here of the Pharisee. Because he trusted in his own intuition. He trusted in his own good deeds. He trusted in his own self, if you will. And, and here's something you might note about the Pharisees. They, they did have strict adherence to the law. But that strict adherence to the law sometimes caused them to exclude Doing what was right. And that was a problem that Jesus encountered with the Pharisees. And this wasn't the first encounter that Jesus had with these people. Their motives were generally wrong. Even though they crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's. And here's the reason why. Because of Luke 18 and verse 11. You know what? I'm glad I'm not like other people. Now, what does that mean? I'm glad I'm not like other people. Well, I don't want to be like these people over here. And so here's a guy that, that, that is praying with pride in his heart. And, and here's, here's the tax collector. And, and he, wouldn't, he was so humble that he wouldn't even raise his eyes to God. Now, let, let me show you the, the, the posture, the posture of, a, of a general Jew who prayed in public. All right, here it is. You ready for this? Got your seatbelt on? Here's the Pharisee, and he's, he's looking up to God, and his hands are raised up in the air. And this is the way he's praying. Now, why is that significant? Because the tax collector says he didn't even want to raise his eyes toward heaven. Because he was humble. And he beat his breast, saying... I'm not even worthy to call you father. I'm not even worthy to mention you as God because of my weaknesses and my imperfections and my sins and my mistakes. And so he beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And what's the takeaway from that? That that's what we all are. Now, now, I want to talk about the fact that there are two types of sinners. And it's very important to know the difference between the two. Number one, there are saved sinners. That's what the majority of us are in this room. We're, we're saved sinners. The majority of us in this room, we've, we've repented of our sins. We've confessed our faith in Christ. And we've been baptized. We've been immersed. And, we, we, and we've done that. And we're saved by the blood of Jesus. But that doesn't mean we don't sin. 
That doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. That, that doesn't mean that we don't have thoughts that we shouldn't have from time to time. And that doesn't mean that we don't do things that we shouldn't do from time to time. We're, we, we are saved as sinners. And then number two, there are sinners who need to be saved. There are still sinners out there who are lost, who are alienated from God, who are away from God, who are apart from God, and they need to be saved. But that doesn't change the fact that we're all sinners. And when you read the book of Romans, maybe I'm going to suggest the first five chapters of the book of Romans. Paul goes through great depth and detail to tell the Roman church, look, we're undone. We're, we're, we're ungodly, we're, we're enemies, we're, we're sinners. We, we all come short of the glory of God. And incidentally, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And, and so here is this humble tax collector. And, and the message that Jesus gives to us to clinch this account is in verse 14. Here's what he says. These are the words of Jesus. I tell you, this man, the one who said he was a sinner, the one who beat his breast, the one who wouldn't raise his eyes to God, this man, he went down to his house justified rather than the other, the Pharisee, who talked about how good he was, who trusted in himself. He said, look, I fast twice a week, even though I get hungry. I fast twice a week and I, and I give tithes of all that I possess. God, don't you, don't you see how good I am? This man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who puts himself in an exalted position, someday will come crashing down and it'll be a hard fall. But, but, the one who, but the one who's already on his knees and saying, God, forgive me. This man will be exalted. And so tonight, as we think about these two parables in Luke chapter 18. One about the persistent widow. Persistently praying, didn't stop, didn't give up. And, you know, that, that might remind us of, of some times maybe when we think about what our children do to us and what they've done to us, what our grandchildren do to us. A, a, a child who is just so persistent as, as, as the child comes in and says, I want a popsicle. Well, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't need it right now. You, you, five minutes later, mom, I want a, I want a popsicle. Well, you know, you know it's, just, it's just not good timing right now. Maybe a little bit. Maybe, yeah. Ten minutes later, I want a popsicle. Go to the fridge and get it. <laughs> Leave me alone. The, 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 there's some sense in which even though that's so simplistic and outlandish, that we just keep, God, I need wisdom. God, I need direction. God, I need guidance. God, I need mercy. God, I need forgiveness. God, I need. And if we weary God with those requests. And it's something that God says, that's good for you. You're showing humility. You're, you're understanding that you're, you're totally dependent on me 24-7. I'm going to grant that. It may not be in the time that you wanted in, but I'm going I'm to grant it to you. Because you're showing humility. What, what are some takeaways from the message tonight? Number one, let, let's talk about this. Am I blessed to have God or is he blessed to have me? You, you ever thought about that? You know, you, know, you know, some people act like they are a gift to God. But, but I need to be blessed to have God in my life. And not think that I'm somebody special and God's so blessed to have me in his kingdom, in his church. Number two, do I ever... Pray with pride. I mean, really, when I trust in myself, I trust in my own good works and my own good deeds and my own good fill in the blank. Do I ever pray like that? And number three, do I pray with persistence? I want to tell you something. You don't, have to, you don't ever have to pray. You don't ever have to pray for the lost to be saved. That's, God, that's God's overriding will. You don't ever have to pray that prayer. 
We know that's, that, that's God's will, so you don't have to pray that. But you can be specific about a person you know and be on your knees and say, God, my spouse is not a Christian. I want to do what it takes. I want to do what I can. I, I want to plant a seed in their heart. I want to plant a seed in their life. I want to be so faithful that they'll pick up the mantle and they'll say, if it's that important to her or that important to him, maybe I'm missing something and I need to know more about this. That's praying with persistence. Maybe I've got a young person in my home who's not a Christian. And they've reached the age where they know right from wrong, good from evil, truth from error. And they're, 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 just, they're just disinterested or they've, they've fallen away. And they've, they've, I, I, need to be, I need to be in my prayer closet and persistently saying, God, help me to find the right words. Send a mentor. Send somebody to help me get through to this person that they need to come home and come back. Praying with persistence. Asking and seeking and knocking and not quitting and just weary God with this request. Those are three takeaways from tonight's message. Let's end with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for these two parables tonight. Of this widow who wasn't treated properly. When she came before the judge who did have no regard for you nor, her, nor his fellow man. But because of her persistence, it paid off. And she was able to avenge her adversary. And Jesus says, I have found faith in her. Help us tonight not to, not to pray with pride like we're somebody. That we don't have a position or we don't have a title, but we're just a servant. We're a slave. We're yours. Help us to realize, Father, that we cannot allow ourselves to trust in ourselves, in our own merits, in our own good deeds but to humble ourselves like the tax collector did who wouldn't even raise his eyes to heaven but beat his breast and stood afar off and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Help us, Father, to know that we are blessed to have you as the sovereign God in our lives. Take us, mold us, make us, Use us to your name's honor and glory. And may we always seek to do your will and not ours. In Jesus' name, amen. What's the name of the song, Shed? Jesus paid it all. And he did. He paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. Jesus paid it all. It may be tonight that you have not yet let Jesus into your heart and life. And he's already paid it. Your response is faith, repentance, confession, immersion, raising up to walk in newness of life. And it may be that somewhere along the line you've, you've lost the persistence of prayer. And tonight you want to have somebody pray with you and for you. Shed while we stand and sing our song.
see everyone out again tonight. If we have any visitors with us, we certainly want to invite you back each and every opportunity you have to be with us. The announcements are pretty much the same as they were this morning. I will read a card I received this morning from, from Janice. Your thoughtfulness means so much. Thank you for the food cards and visits and most of all the prayers and Christian love Janice Cole family I received another card tonight it says dear brothers and sisters thank you so much for your prayers visits and food food basket after Sam's surgery and then his fall and broken ribs he's slowly improving and hopes to come and worship with all of you soon. This is in Christian love, Sam Haynes family. We look forward to seeing Sam back with us soon. I will read this again for the graduates. Time is short. Graduate recognition will be next Sunday after evening services. Graduates will be recognized a slideshow will be presented and tables set up in their honor. Parents, if you haven't already, please get the photos of the graduates for the slideshow to Melissa Young as soon as possible, along with a five by seven picture of the graduate. Also get the picture for the bulletin to PJ as soon as possible. Graduates may decorate their tables next Sunday afternoon. Again, if we missed anything, it's probably in the bulletin. Certainly want to remember those that are on our prayer list. If there's anything that I have missed, if not, shit. If I get the slip out. If you missed the opportunity to take the Lord's Supper, it is offered in room two at this time. Uh, if you would stand, we'll sing uh, 556, first and fourth verse. We have our closing prayer. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. Soon the pearly gates will open. 
to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Let us pray. <clears throat> Our eternal God, our Heavenly Father, the provider of all of our needs, indeed we are blessed. Thankful of Thee for all the blessings You give us each day, all the things You provide for our sustainability while we dwell here upon this earth. Greater than this, the Blessings of the spiritual blessings that you give unto us. For your son who died for us. For all the promises that you've made concerning those that live faithful unto thee. We're mindful this evening, Father, of those of our number that are sick. Those that's taking treatments. Those that's having procedures done those that are in different ways ailing of the flesh. We pray, Father, that you will bless those that's ministering to them. As they do the testing and the procedures, may they have the, will, the wisdom to do the things that's in the best interest of their physical well-being. If it be in course thy will, they may have a speedy and complete recovery back to their normal health. We pray, Father, for those that are in the nursing homes, in the hospitals, those shut in at home. Give them comfort and strength in their time of need. We pray, Father, that thy blessings be upon our graduates as they go forth into the occupations or further schooling or whatever they pursue. We pray, Father, that they will pursue the paths of righteousness they live according to thy will, according to thy way, and that their occupations will be such will be acceptable and pleasing unto thee. We pray, Father, that you will bless us each day of our lives and the things that are right. Keep us in those things that's contrary to thy will, that heaven may be our home in eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.